so many fresh powder coated parts. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the shop and welcome back to the continuation of the 2020 High Country build. We are starting the very exciting point of doing the reassembly. The disassembly was a blast. We got it done in literally only about uh, a day and a half. And in terms of hours, we only had, well, probably about eight hours total four in taking off all the stuff that's getting painted and four in dismantling all the suspension components. But as you guys saw in the beginning of the video, we just got everything back from Martin's Powder Coating. They're an effort of Pennsylvania. They did a great job on all of our suspension components that are gonna be going back on the build today. And that's pretty much what we're gonna be doing in today's episode. It's gonna be an awesome video, enjoy. But real quick though, I want you guys to realize that as of this video going live on Tuesday at 8 p.m., you guys have exactly 52 hours, maybe even less than that if you're catching this video. Video later to enter into dream diesel giveaway number 10 the f-250 platinum ten thousand dollars and five times entries are available right now and we have a limited windbreaker slash rain breaker on the site for him and her guys you got to keep your ladies in mind believe me they like to get stuff in the mail too so we decided to do a his and her windbreaker that is available right now i actually wish that i had mine but they're currently being made and it would be perfect for today so let's get back in the shop real quick when you guys are gonna look great in that thing so back to what i was saying we've got all of our parts back from powder coat and they look absolutely amazing. We've got our diff cover that's been powder coated. We've got our receiver that's been just looking so fresh. I don't think I'll ever want to put a trailer hitch in that opening there ever. Jake, I'm surprised you haven't. Oh. <laughs> We've got our knuckles, our knuckle castings back, our lower control arms and our upper control arms. So this gives away what direction we're gonna be going for suspension on this truck. And that kind of gives away the direction that we're going on this build. We are gonna be leveling it. So we've got the McGoy's upper control arms. This is the same set of upper control arms we actually have on my 2020 Denali. I've loved them. Working with McGoy's is an absolute honor. Got to hang out with these guys a lot out at SEMA. Super genuine, super enthusiastic dudes. They were kind enough to actually set aside a set of pre-production upper control arms. So right now, these actually aren't available to the public due to just basically supply and demand, but they will be very soon. So if you guys are interested in picking yourself up a set of these upper control arms for your 2020 plus, GMHD truck, whether it's gas, diesel, whatever the case is, 2500, 3500, Chevy or GMC, they will have you covered. Not only do they have the upper control arms, but in the leveling kit, you actually get a set of leveling keys, which Jake is grabbing right now that we'll be installing as well. Now these came out really kick ass. We pulled the face plates off and actually got them powder coated bronze chrome. Give you guys a nice look at that color there. And it came out looking absolutely killer. We wanted to play off some of the bronze accents that come from the factor in the 2020s. And that's pretty much what we're gonna do here. Very minor touches that go a long way. And Martin's killed it, absolutely crushed it. So we were able to get these ready to rock and roll. And we basically have to do the reassembly of everything. There's a lot of work that we need to get done. And basically just getting these suspension components ready to put back on the truck. Bushings need to get put back in. Upper ball joints need to be back installed. We've got all of our bushings that need to go on the lower control arm here, 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 there. And then of course we've got our lower ball joints as well. We've got a few of our new tools ready to rock and roll for that process, which makes things a heck of a lot easier. And we'll be smooth sailing here shortly. Now we do have a nice surprise for you guys that's sitting over there on the shelf. And we're going to get to that here in a little bit. So definitely stay tuned. If you guys are super excited about this build starting to go in the opposite direction of coming back together, smash that thumbs up button and tap that subscribe button. If you haven't already, I see a lot of you guys are actually not subscribed to my YouTube channel, which is cool. I'm glad that you guys are visiting. I hope you like what you see. A lot of you are coming back. I can see that in my analytics as well. And I realize, guys, commitment is a tough thing, especially to my younger guys out there, maybe even that have a chick that's considering getting married one day. Believe me, it's a lot of pill to swallow, but fortunately, this kind of commitment is not that big of a deal. Tap that subscribe if you haven't already. And if not, you know, it's cool. It's still great to have you guys. So as I had mentioned, we do have a lot of work to get done, but before we can actually get started on that, we have to prepare everything for reassembly with all of its fittings and bushings, et cetera. So we're gonna get started on that right now. I don't know. Anybody ever experienced 
the joy and the bliss and the amazement that comes out of pressing bushings back into lower control arms. Well, if you haven't, take it from me. It's not really actually that fun. Uh, it's done, but it's not that fun. But boys, we are done. They are dirty, obviously, but we'll wipe that down here in a little bit. We have Jake just kind of finagling one of the grease boots on uh, the upper control arm. Ball joint right here. So yeah, we are done that, which I'm really, really happy about. Like, really happy about, to be honest. We've got the wife and the doggies hanging out over here. Hello, Miss Dirty Max. What you chowing down? Some chocolate pretzels? Some peanut butter pretzels? I talk about them in every single upload. I know you guys are probably sick of hearing about the peanut butter pretzels. Oh yeah, they're amazing. If you do not have a Costco membership, they are not sponsored by the now that'd be sick though. Costco, I see you out there watching. My patience is a little bit tested right now at the front end, so we're gonna move on to the back. Diff cover and receiver are next on our to-do list. All right, receiver's back on, differential cover's back on. We're letting the RTV cure, and then we're gonna fill that up with differential fluid so we're ready to rock and roll. What are you guys thinking about the white on white combination thus far? I think it's coming together super nice, and it's gonna look immaculate once it's all back and together. I really like the fact that we ended up powder coating the stock differential cover. Couldn't find any aftermarket ones, and honestly, the factory one looks phenomenal. If you guys are vibing with that setup right there, smash that thumbs up button right now, boys, because, well, we still got a lot of work to do, but this gives you a great idea as to the small little detailed direction that we're going. Now, we bring ourselves back to the front end, and I promised you guys earlier in this video that I had a sweet surprise for you sitting over on that shelf, so check these things out. This, ladies and gentlemen, was the little surprise that we were teasing earlier in the vlog. We've got ourselves some Fox Gen 2 external reservoir shocks for the front end. These are their performance series and they're designed for a leveling kit. They also include oh, your associated hardware and a mounting bracket for the reservoir itself, which will kind of go right on here and it'll pinch the reservoir. But what's pretty cool about these is it's actually, it's their new design. Uh, their old design is kind of like what's on Dream Diesel Giveaway number 10, if you guys can recall. It's a silver shock cylinder with a silver shock reservoir, but now they have black shock reservoir, anodized black bracket on the bottom here to give it a little bit of, I guess, different flair. I think that's pretty cool. We actually didn't even know that we were ordering these. We grabbed them thinking that they were the Fox Gen 1, which would have been honestly awesome as well, but we got these and it was a little bit of a surprise. So that's gonna add a little bit more personality there up front, which I'm pretty excited about. You can see Jake still having fun with this boot. I hate these parts. <laughs> what was that? Like two pieces? I wanted to see where you were going with that. I'm going up very, very, very slowly. <laughs> Whoa. I quit. Jesus, I quit. Check it out, boys and girls. Oh, man. Would you just look at the beauty in that? My goodness, that looks good. None of that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so we are done the passenger side, and you can see right here, it looks absolutely outstanding. McGoy's upper control arms installed, box shocks, performance series shocks, and of course, their associated reservoirs. I can't even talk. <laughs> reservoirs mounted with a pretty cool little Fox mounting bracket here, as you guys can see. Turns out really nice. We've got everything installed on the bottom. It's fun, but not really fun fighting the independent front suspension on these trucks. It's a little systematic. We did kind of forget the orientation 
completion of the reinstallation, but fortunately, we were able to kind of subdue and work our way around them. One of those things being the uh, torsion bars, kind of forgot to put it in, but we realized that we could actually drop down uh, the torsion bar bracket and kind of thread that thing through. But that's where we are right now. We've got everything remounted and it just looks, man, it looks good. Absolutely amazing. So right now, guys, we have the driver's side to do. It is getting pretty late. It's already like 9.15. We've been at this for a few hours now, but you know what? No complaints whatsoever. We got tunes on. We do have that new Wi-Fi in here. It's no longer buffering music, which is also kind of a really nice thing to have when you're kind of wrenching away. And well, we got some more work to do, guys. So we're gonna finish off the driver's side here real quick and we'll touch base right after. Well, boys, cheers to the suspension mod completion. Mm. Nothing like a local craft beer in a pounder can to finish off the evening. It's funny how much time filming actually takes. Jake and I were just kind of sharing a laugh over that. And I exaggerate by no means in giving you these numbers. This side took us about an hour and a half's time because I tried to do a majority of the work for you guys to kind of walk you through step by step. And I honestly really enjoy it. So this is not me complaining by any means, but I think it's an interesting perspective that I kind of wanted to share with all of you versus this side over here. You ready for it? it took us about a half hour. So it really does add considerable amount of time to a project. And I'm sure you've heard this from other YouTubers across the platforms that like to share this kind of similar content or anything really DIY, because you gotta make sure that you're always catching step by step. And luckily Jake is a huge helper there. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking like, what does Jake do for me? I mean. Jake doesn't really have a role. He's been a friend of mine for like four years. Uh, he was working a flooring job. We did a whole bunch of like side housing projects together. And I mean, it was just kind of always one of those things. We're always kind of chilling. And it got to the point where I was just kind of really needing help, like badly, because I had all these vehicles and I had my shop and I was bouncing from spot to spot. And I found myself calling Ubers and hooking up to my gooseneck to get my trailer two miles down the road, just so I could be self-sufficient. And uh, he was over one night, we were sharing a beer, just like kind of we are right now as we're winding down, we're getting cleaned up. And I'm like, yo man, you should probably just come work for me because I could use the help. And it was uh, a no brainer. Kind of that simple. I was like, yo, if you want, you can take some time to think about it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll take a little. No, nah, no, nah, I'll come. Yeah, I'll put He's my like, no, nah, I'm good, tomorrow. dude. I'm like literally putting my two weeks to my job tomorrow. And well, that's what Jake's been doing now. And he's been helping out tremendously around here, especially with some of these projects. But there's a lot of stuff that kind of happens behind the scenes. Kind of boring business stuff. We don't really have to get into all that right now. But I just kind of wanted to go into that as a small rant here at the end of this video. I'll let you guys kind of soak this in one more time. I'm so happy with how this came out. This is really the first time I've ever uh, taken, I guess you could say the initiative to pull apart essentially the entire front end of an independent suspension truck, pull all the bushings out, ball bearings, ball joints, etc., and kind of go to this length um, to coat things up. But I'm so happy with how it turned out. That look right there is just super cool. You're gonna be able to see a lot of those lower control arm from the front. Granted, when the bumper's on, you're really gonna have to kind of look for it, but you will see it and it will shine really, really nicely. I'm a goys. Thank you guys so much for sending us out these upper control arms. They ride so well on my 2020 and I knew I wanted to go that route. I am excited to see how these Fox shocks ride in comparison to the Ranchos right here that this truck and the Denali share. Denali still has them, this truck not so much, but I do have some ideas as to what we'll do there. We did not actually install the back ones and uh, we'll go into a little bit of that information in the next video. Uh, it's kind of a funny story, but I'm kind of gonna leave that for the next one. Great stuff here, just gotta put the diff fluid back in. All that RTV should be cured. Nice, fresh receiver. Oh my goodness, it is such a beautiful thing. And uh, yeah, guys, this thing is uh, transformed considerably. Can't wait to get all those parts back from showing over at Peach Bottom. That's really gonna take this truck to the next level and I can't wait. And I'm so excited to show you guys what we're gonna be doing with our first set of truly custom in-house built headlights that are sitting patiently right over there on that shelf. Oh, taking you guys outside. It is about 10.45 p.m. We've been at everything for about eight hours now, but man, I'll consider it such a successful day. Hopefully you guys can see me right now because I don't have a screen that flips around on this camera, but I do like this camera. Anyway, I just really want to remind you guys that our biggest giveaway ever, the Platinum 2017 Platinum, 25,000 miles on this truck, and truly one of the nicest trucks that we've given away, plus $10,000 is about to end. Five times entries right now, guys. Check out the website for all the information on how to get entered, but seriously consider it. You might be standing right here in literally like two and a half weeks to take possession of that truck and hang out with us for the day. It's going to be an absolutely awesome time and I can't wait to meet you. That being said, my likely I'll let you guys do you the best. Tap that subscribe button on the way out. We're going to jump back inside here, wrap some things up, get everything inside, enjoy the rest of our beers. We're going to hit the sack. See y'all in the next stop. Tell me why do I still feel so alone?